السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإلهكم إله واحد لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله امين يا رب العالمين ان شاء الله today i'll complete the brief comments i wanted to make with you about بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the first evening that i spoke with you i talked to you a little bit about the phrase بسم الله but i did not share anything for my as a reminder for myself and for any of you of the additional words in the phrase Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And in order to help you understand them, I want you to first acknowledge or appreciate something about the difficulty of translating the names of Allah. Because as many of you might know, the common English translation says, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, or the most merciful, the most kind. And those kinds of translations, first of all, the problem with them is when we say the word beneficent, I think pretty much here everyone is sitting listening to me understands the English language. When do you use the word beneficent in your everyday language? You don't. I mean, I don't think you've ever met somebody and say, hey bro, you're so beneficent. You don't, you don't do that. So we, we translate Quran with words that we don't use. And that becomes the, the entire purpose of translation is that the, the word of Allah becomes easier for us to relate to easier for us to understand. So if we translate the word of Allah in English, then the English we use has to be one that we actually can relate to, we can connect with it. But when we use words like beneficent, then it, you can't connect with that. The other problem is when you say the most merciful and the most kind, then they sound like the same thing. But there are two different names of Allah, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, they're definitely different. The Arabic principle is إِذَا اجْتَمَعَا تَفَرَّقَا when two names or two things are mentioned together, that means they cannot mean the same thing. They have to mean two different things. So there's a difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. And that has to be made clear to anyone who says it. As you're saying, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, you and I have to be aware of what is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. And how does each of them benefit me? And why is that in the Bismillah anyway? Why not just say Bismillah? Why even the addition of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? So let's start from an easy place. The first thing I want to share with you is both of these words, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim have something in common. Yes, they are different, but they have something in common. And what they have in common, they come from the same origin, Rahma. Ar-Rahman has to do with Rahma, and Ar-Rahim also has to do with Rahma. Now what is Rahma? Typically they translate Rahma as mercy. I personally, Allahu A'lam, have a problem with that translation. And the reason I don't like that translation is because in the English language, when you say mercy, that actually means you were spared. For example, the king showed him mercy and forgave him. Meaning he was about to punish him, but he was merciful instead. Or you were merciful to that animal, meaning that animal was suffering and you took care of it. Or you know, in the hosp a lot of hospitals in the world, they call them mercy hospital. Right, the idea that somebody's suffering and you're getting rid of their suffering or alleviating their suffering and that's an act of what? Mercy. But in the Arabic language, and by the way, mercy is even if you, if you didn't do your homework in school or you failed the exam and your teacher is about to write a big giant F on your paper and you say mercy, mercy. Meaning you're asking to be spared. Don't punish me, that's mercy. But in the Arabic language, the word rahma has nothing to do with being spared. Actually, rahma has to do with the word raham, which means the belly of a mother, the womb of a mother. When a woman is pregnant, then she's called, you know, you know rahimat al-mar'a, meaning the woman has a child in her belly. Allah Azza wa Jal in a hadith Qudsi describes talking to the womb of the mother, and he says, Ishtaqtuka bi ismi. I, I, I named you. I drew, I drew your name from my name. Allah says about himself, an Allah, an Rahman. I am Allah, I am a Rahman. And then he talks to the womb of the mother and says, I gave you the name from my name. Meaning, Ar Rahman gave the name Ar Raham to the womb of the mother. That's important because 
if we're going to understand the names Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, we have to understand the womb of the mother. If we are to get any idea what these names mean for us. So let's, let's think about that together. A child, you know, every other relationship human beings have with other human beings is a two-way relationship. People say to each other, I love you no matter what. But it's not no matter what, is it? If you insult me all the time, if you make fun of me all the time, if you're angry with me all the time, if you push me away all the time, if you spit at me, if you hurt me, if you lie to me, if you do these things, then what happens to that love? It starts going away. I thought you said no matter what. I could do whatever I want. No, love is something that has to be nourished and taken care of. It's not unconditional. There's no such thing as unconditional love in most relationships. You have to, love is grown when love is shown. You, you receive it, and then it grows. And when you don't receive it, it starts withering away. You see? But there's one relationship human beings have that's very strange. This thing is growing inside a mother, and as it grows, it's causing the mother more and more pain. And she eats food, and he's taking all the food. And he's sleeping, but she's awake in pain. And as he grows more, he causes her more pain. Backache, stomachache, throwing up. She can't taste food anymore, constantly. And this mother, as the child grows older, you know, the love she has for this child, she doesn't say, man, you made me throw up like 16 times, I hate you. No. She says, ah, this baby. SubhanAllah, this baby, he's giving me a hard time. But she still loves this baby. She'll walk carefully when she's in the kitchen to not touch the corner of a table because she wants to protect the baby. Does the baby even know that the mother is protecting her? No. The baby has no idea. The baby's living without paying rent, without paying for the food that it's getting, free cleanup service, everything's taken care of. All the problems are being carried by who? The mother and the, the, the recipient of that love and that care. The baby inside has no idea. He has no idea. For that child, their entire universe is just that belly. For, their, for them, the sky and the earth, and the, there's no sky and earth. This, their sky and earth is just the belly of this mother. Their entire existence is being covered, wrapped. And outside of that is a mother who only loves this child. And you think of it this way. If somebody cut you, if somebody made you bleed, would you say, Oh, you baby, baby, baby. It doesn't make any sense. But this mother gives birth to a child and almost dies, bleeding. She experiences the kind of pain we can't even imagine. Her body tears open to give birth to this child. And she almost dies in excruciating pains of hours and hours and hours, all caused by this child. And at the end of all of that, what's the revenge she takes? You cut me, you made me bleed, I'll show you. She immediately starts feeding the child, doesn't she? And as soon as she starts feeding the child, for a lot of women, when they feed the child for the first time, it causes them even more pain. It actually causes them even more pain. So Allah says, Wahnan, ala wahn. He says, weakness on top of weakness, kurhan, out of difficulty and pain that she experiences, she give, keeps giving to the child, keeps giving to the child. Allah wanted to show us something about the way He loves us. By choosing the names Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Allah gives, and He gives, and He gives, and He gives. Every second He gives. He cares, He loves, He protects. Like a mother cares and protects, you have no idea how much more Allah does so. And you guess who has no idea? We have no idea. And when we say, what has Allah ever done for me? Where was Allah when I needed Him? How come I made dua, He didn't even answer my dua? And yet, you are enveloped, covered inside the rahmah of Allah. It's not just mercy, you understand. A mother is not merciful to her baby. A mother loves and cares and protects her baby. So the word al-Rahman and al-Rahim have to do with Allah's love and His care and His protection while we have no idea how incredibly powerful that love and that care and that protection is. You understand? That's the first thing we have to know about the words al-Rahman and al-Rahim. Now the second thing, the second thing is equally important is to help you understand the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. I'll tell you three things about Ar-Rahman, three qualities of the word. I won't go technical with you that it's Sigatul Mubalagha and all of that. Just remember three things. 
because of the way Ar-Rahman is spelled, you see the an at the end? Ar-Rahman? Words in Arabic like Jawan, Atshan, Ghadban, there's other words that have an at the end also. When they have this an at the end, three things happen to that word. Three things, okay? The first thing is, it becomes very extreme. It becomes what? Extreme. So, it's not just that Allah loves and cares, or Allah is loving and caring, he, He's definitely being described as extremely loving and extremely caring. Unimaginably loving and imaginably caring. It's not a normal amount of love or care. It's an extreme amount. That's the first thing that happens to the word. The second thing that happens to the word is that it is happening right now. It's happening immediately. You know if you say to somebody, man, that man is patient. MashaAllah, that man is what? Patient. Or this man is knowledgeable. Or this man is wise. Or this woman is wise. But she's sleeping right now. She's not being wise right now. She's just sleeping. She has the quality of being wise, but it doesn't come out until she says something wise. Or she does something wise, you understand? Just like that when you say, this man is patient. You describe someone who's not here. And you say, you know that man, he's very patient. Do you know for a fact he's being patient right now? No. But when you use an at the end, you're not just giving someone a quality, you're saying that that quality is happening when? Right now. He's being loving and caring right now. It's not something you have to wait for. I'll give you an example to help you understand this. You know, in back home where I come from, a lot of people have jobs, and in their jobs they get paid every two weeks. Yeah, they get paid on a Friday every, every other week. So somebody has a boss, and their boss is supposed to give them their paycheck on Friday at 4 o'clock. But the boss is in a meeting at 3, in 3 o'clock, he's in, on the other side of the city, stuck in traffic. And this person is waiting for their paycheck, they're getting late for a train they have to catch, and they're waiting for the boss, and their coworker says, hey, don't worry, boss is reliable. He'll be here. The boss is what? Reliable. But it's not good enough for him. He says, I know he's reliable, but I wish he was being reliable when? Right now? I need it right now. I know he's good, but I need that good to work right now. Where is he now? He's not answering my texts. When human beings are in need, they don't want to know about the quality you have. They want to know how that quality is helping you when? Right now. When you say the word Ar-Rahman, then you are accepting that Allah's love and His care and His protection is extreme. And that His love and His care and His protection is showering on you when? Right now. It's happening as we speak. As we speak, it's happening. The third part of this meaning is the, of the word Ar-Rahman is the scariest part. It's al hudus which means it's not always permanent. Atshan, same way, an, means extremely thirsty. Is someone always extremely thirsty? No. Ghadban means extremely angry. Is someone always extremely angry? I'm not talking about your wife. I'm just saying other people. <laughs> someone always extremely... No, they eventually they calm down. Jawan, extremely hungry. Is someone always extremely hungry? No. These qualities are extreme. They're happening right now. But something can come and get rid of them. So if you're extremely thirsty, what can get rid of it? Water can get rid of it. If you're extremely hungry, food can get rid of it. Allah Azza wa chose this name to describe something. Allah is extremely loving and extremely caring when? Right now. But it's something you can do. Something you can do and I can do that can disqualify us from benefiting from Ar-Rahman. Isn't that scary? That it's not, you can't always benefit from it unconditionally. There, there can be something you can do that can what? Remove it. Get rid of it. And you know why the Sahaba understood this? The Sahaba understood this. They said, Ar-Rahman is for everyone in this world. But Ar-Rahim is only for the believers in the next world. Because they understood, people do some things here, Allah keeps giving them love. Even the disbeliever who curses Allah, who makes fun of Allah's messenger, the disbeliever who mocks the Qur'an, who doesn't care about anything, doesn't disregards Allah in the worst ways, commits the worst sins and is proud of his or her sins. Those kind of disbelievers also. Does Allah give them love? Does Allah give them care? Yeah. But they're doing something that will disqualify themselves at one point. Three qualities. Extreme. It's happening right now. And it may not be permanent for you. It may not be permanent. Now let's talk about Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahim actually means someone, someone who has a quality. Someone who has a quality. 
even if it doesn't come out, it's there. Like, for example, they say Aziz or Kareem. Kareem means noble. Even if someone's not acting noble, they still have nobility in them. And the more important thing for you, Rahim actually means someone who's always loving and caring. Someone who's what? Always loving and caring. It doesn't have the right now. It has the what? Always. Now look at the mercy of Allah. If Allah only said, Bismillah ar-Rahman, if He only said what? Bismillah ar-Rahman, then the, the love of Allah would be extreme. It would be right now, but it wouldn't be forever. If Allah said, Bismillah ar-Rahim, then the love of Allah would be forever, but no guarantee that it's coming when? Right now. Allah wanted to have us understand that His love and His protection and His, and His care is coming right now and will always be there. So what did He do? He said, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. He took care of our immediate by saying Ar-Rahman. And He took care of our future by saying what? Ar-Rahim. And the scholars even argue, why not even change the order? Why not say, Bismillah ar-Rahim ar-Rahman? Why not do it that way? Because Allah knows who He created. Listen to this carefully. If you're very hungry, if you're very hungry, and alhamdulillah, your fasting in Cape Town is very easy. So this, I'm talking to the people in Texas. If you're very hungry, or if you're very thirsty, and even if it's not Ramadan, you're not fasting, but you're, you're, you, know, you, you haven't eaten anything, and you come after a long day at work, and you know, your wife says to you, what do you want to eat on Wednesday? What do you want to eat next Friday? You're like, I don't care, woman, just give me some food right now. When you're in a problem right now, you cannot think about what? The future. If somebody's going through pain right now, if somebody's house is on fire right now, you don't talk to them about a retirement plan. It doesn't make any sense. Human beings, when they have a problem, they are stuck in the right now. Now, you have your food. You finish eating. Ah, it was good. And then she says, and then you say, what did you want to have next Friday? When your immediate is taken care of, then your mind goes to what? The future. When you have an immediate problem, all you can think about is now, now, now. Which name of Allah takes care of now? Ar-Rahman. And when He takes care of now, which name of Allah takes care of the future? Ar-Rahim. His love and His care is now and will always be there. The last thing that you and I should note. We say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in everything that we do. Of all of Allah's names, Allah has many names. Al-Qahar, Al-Wahhab, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. He has many names. He chose these two names for everything we begin. You're about to eat, you're about to work, you're about to get in the car, you're about to change your clothes, you're about to do anything. We say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why is that important? That's important because we recognize something. Everything Allah is allowing us to do, Everything Allah is allowing us to do is because He loves us and He cares for us. And sometimes we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and we start the final exam in school, yeah? And then we fail that exam. It happens or no? Then you say Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. It's different thicker, <laughs> right? <laughs> but in any case, you, take, you said Bismillah and you still fail the exam and you're like, hey, I said Bismillah, it didn't work. Ustaz Muhammad said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah's love and care. Where was Allah's love and care with the exam? <laughs> you have to understand one last thing about ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah Azza wa Jal will give you His love and His care on His terms, not on your terms. And you may not always understand His terms. Somebody's in the hospital, dying of cancer, at a young age. It happens or no? And Allah is still a rahman and rahim to them or no? He is. But you and I cannot understand, even they may not be able to understand, in what way is Allah a rahman and a rahim to them? They may not know. Let me tell you one little story and I'll conclude for today. Just to understand how Allah's love and care works. Yusuf alayhi salam was a boy, taken away from his family, kidnapped, thrown in the woods, in a ditch, then sold, turned into a slave, child slavery. What a crime. If you see news today of children being sold as slaves, isn't that disgusting? Isn't that disturbing? You want to change the channel. That's what happened to Yusuf alayhi salam. Did he deserve it? No. 
and then he's a servant living in a house, doing a good job, doing an on, honest, honest job, and he gets accused wrongly. And what happens next? He gets thrown in jail. Did he deserve being thrown in jail? No. And you're like, oh, but Allah is a Rahman, a Rahim. He should cover him in his love and his care. But he got taken away from his father. He got taken away from his family. He got thrown into jail. All of these problems happen. But you know, eventually Yusuf salam came out of jail, remember? And when he came out of jail, he interpreted a dream. And when he interpreted a dream, what did the dream mean? That the country is going to have a drought, a water problem. You guys know something about that. Yeah? The country is going to have a water problem. So all the farmland is going to dry up and die. So we have to save the food for seven years while the water is still here. Because the next seven years, the water will be gone. That was the interpretation of his dream, yes or no? Because of him, be, if he was never in jail, the king would never have met him. And if he, was never in, if he was never kidnapped, he would never have been in jail. And if he was never in jail, he would have never met the king. And if he never met the king, he would have never interpreted the dream. Isn't that true? And because he interpreted the dream, thousands of children for seven years got to stay with their parents and didn't die of thirst and hunger because of Allah's plan. Because Allah didn't just so, show love and care to him, but sometimes Allah's love and care, maybe your, a little bit of your suffering creates a lot of love and care for so many other people. Subhanallah. And you know what? For every one of those children that was saved, who gets the reward? Yusuf alayhi salam. And Yusuf alayhi salam's a little bit of suffering little bit of suffering, and, and compared to what he's going to get, he acknowledges that Allah Azza wa is Ar-Rahman, that Allah Azza wa Jal is Ar-Rahim. These are the names we call on when we start a task. Don't ever lose sight of the fact, whether things work out for you the way you want or not. One thing is always there, Allah never stopped loving, Allah never stopped protecting, Allah never stopped caring. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from the heart a people of Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Barakallahu li wa lakum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.